Hi, Linton Allen here, and this is Sketch and Tell. And again, welcome to the students at the uh, Austin Hospital School. And again, I'd rather be with you in person, but because of the uh, lockdown conditions, I'm bringing uh, this to you via a video link. I really would like to uh, do a, a, an art lesson with you, and if you can get access to some paper, some oil pastels, uh, crayons, or some uh, textures, then I'm hoping that you can follow me a step at a time. And I'm going to be drawing one of my uh, favorite creatures. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous uh, video link that I really like to look around in the world of nature and one of my favorite creatures is the dolphin. And so I'm going to and the kookaburras as well. But we're going to have a go at drawing a dolphin and whenever I start off I like to begin with doing a very quick shape. And so I'd like you to imagine what the shape of a dolphin would be if you, in your imagination of course, but if you kind of uh, chop the tail and the nose and the fins off, the shape of course would be spherical, it would be um, roundish, of course, and it would be like, I like to think of it as a banana shape, or a half moon shape, or even like your eye. Now, I'm not talking about your eyeball, but if you look in the mirror, your eye is what we call an almond shape, very much like a dolphin. So, in the middle of your page, if we can just draw the, the top of that almond shape or the top of that curved banana. This is going to be the, the back of the dolphin. And then to join up the front and the, the back, we're going, this is the tricky part, we're going to again keep them imagining that shape in our heads and we'll come around and then we'll sort of bring it up to a point. Again, it's like the eye, that, that almond shape or the half moon. And now we can uh, put those bits and pieces back on that we removed. We'll put the, doll, uh, the fin on the top, which of course is called the... Yes, it's called the um, um, a dorsal fin. I just had a memory blank there. I like to think of that as a nacho chip shape. Kind of like a, a triangle shape, but we'll put that there. And then the other fins, which are often called flippers, but they're actually the pectoral fins on the dolphin, we'll put them as an upside down nacho shape. And we'll have uh, one down here, and the other one is on the other side, so we're only going to see just the tip of it there. The tail is a little bit of a challenge because it's not like a fish tail. All fish tails, except for a few uh, queer creatures in the ocean, all fish tails stand up and down and go sideways. Uh, that's like a shark's tail, they're up and down, and other fish. But a dolphin is not a fish. Like the whale, it is a mammal. It's, it's like us. It has warm blood. It uh, breathes air like we do. In fact, it lives in two worlds. It has to take a breath in our world and hold its breath uh, for about 10, 15 minutes and uh, go under the water where it lives in the under, underworld wa uh, world of water and its tail is flat. So we'll imagine that it's, we're looking at it side on. That's why it's a little bit tricky here. So I'm going to just um, do it this way. We'll do two lines like that at the back. And then if you think of the, the letter V, we'll put that letter V inside, kind of like that. And that gives us the, the basic shape of the tail sort of on its side. Then we come up to what is called the nose, but uh, technically it's the snout of the dolphin. But I prefer nose better. In fact, what we're drawing here is the bottlenose dolphin. And we're going to uh, do it in two parts. We'll put one uh, bit out there. I'm not sure what to call that shape. A schnozzle, a honker, or just a, just a nose. But dolphins, by the way their jaw is shaped, are always, well, it looks like they're smiling at us all the time. 
it's, uh, I guess, a bit of a challenge if you're having a bad hair day as a dolphin. You've got to keep smiling. You can't change that like we do. So let's split that shape with a smile and we'll just finish it off like that. And then we'll have a, an eye there. And that's really the basic shape of a dolphin. Just to make a couple of uh, pointers, normally if I was looking at uh, what was being drawn, I would be encouraging you not to stress about whether it looks like this or not. Uh, look, if your dolphin looks like it's eaten too much for breakfast, just imagine it's a happy dolphin. Or if your dolphin looks uh, like a, a shark or some other weird creature, doesn't matter, just have a bit of fun. There's no such thing as a perfect picture. And by the way, it's how you learn when it comes to art. Out of all the thousands of paintings that I have done, there's not one that I can actually put up onto the wall and go, yep, I nailed that. It's perfect. I can quickly find things in every painting that I do that I don't like. I'm learning to first of all look at things that I do like and go, yes, that was good. But then the other things I then say, okay, I can learn from that, I can grow from that, I can try something uh, different next time. So let's think about some of the uh, colours. And this is where I'd like you to choose three colours and we're going to do the water. Just wrap some uh, water around the dolphin. Now you don't have to go from edge to edge, we're just going to do it around the dolphin and leave the, the paper, some of the paper clear. And whether you use blues and greens, as I'm going to, or whether you want to go for more purples and greys, or you might like to go for a whole different set of colours. Again, there's no one right way. It's all about uh, putting a little bit of yourself into your painting, a little bit of your way of looking at things, a little bit of your expression of yourself into the painting. So you can even do that with colours. So, uh, but what I'd like you to do is, as as you put those colours around, if you can watch uh, here that I'm actually putting these colours on as I'm starting to block in my dolphin. I'm putting them on in a wavy motion. And that's because I want to create what's called movement into the painting. And I want the dolphin to appear as if it's moving and swimming through the water or the water is flowing around the dolphin. So again, just think about not just the colours you use, but also about how you put those colours on. So give it a go, just start wrapping those colours around and I'll just uh, put some of these blues and aquas. Go for a little bit of uh, green down here. And, and then I might just choose a lighter blue and just a little bit up here. Before I now start to move on to the colour of the dolphin and blocking that in. I'm just going to grab a little bit of purple and just put it down here just to make it a little bit darker. Again, just to create a little bit of uh, almost light to darkness. Lighter up the top as it moves down to the darker colours where the water gets deeper. What uh, I'd like us now to think about are the, is the dolphin, the, the colour of the body. And again, if you see a dolphin in the wild, or out in the bay, they're a bluey grey colour. Again, depends on what light is coming down through the water to how light or dark that colour is. Now I'm going to use uh, some bluey grey, but again, you don't have to. You can choose, you can have a bit of fun with this. You can paint your dolphin uh, purple or red or orange. Again, just put a little bit of yourself into the dolphin. But let's quickly block that dolphin in. In fact, the colour I've chosen, uh, because I haven't got my glasses on, I thought it was a bluey grey, but it's actually a, it's a, it's a jacaranda colour, almost like a purple colour. That's okay. Let's uh, block in our dolphin. Don't forget to uh, block in those appendages, the tail, as well as the uh, fins, but leave the tummy clear for the moment. And I'll explain in a minute. We'll just uh, do the top of the nose here. And by the way, as you are blocking in your dolphin, this is where you can change the shape of your dolphin if you want to. You kind of can push the colours around and uh, change things. Now the underbelly of the dolphin is always lighter than uh, what it is on the top and that is because of camouflage. 
Normally it's a, it's a white colour, but I'm going to go for a kind of a pinky colour, sort of to match the, the purple that I put on there. So I'll go for a light, a very light pink here, and I'll just put another pink in there as well. As we are still working on the dolphin, I'd like us to think about light and shade. Every picture needs to have that uh, balance or that uh, combination of light and shade because that is what makes paintings also come alive as well as the, the colours you put in. So if you can imagine the light coming down from above and I will just put a little bit of lighter colour here. Imagine the light coming down from above. The light is going to be reflected on the top of the dolphin. So I'm going to actually use two colours here. I'm going to use a kind of a pinky magenta because I wanted to complement the, the purple that I have in the dolphin already. I'll put a little bit of that on the back of the dolphin. And then I'm going to use a lighter pink. And this is uh, what we call the highlight, where the light is just touching the edge, the top edge of the dolphin. And what this does is it not only gives us a sense of light coming down through the water, but it also helps to define, to define that edge, that top edge of the dolphin, so it stands out from all the colours that we have put into our painting so far. So I'll just put a little bit here, a little bit on the tail there. But of course, where there is light, there is that interplay of darkness as well, where the light is not able to, to reach uh, properly. So underneath the dolphin, we are going to need to put a darker colour. And this is where uh, you can use a dark blue, a dark purple, which is what I'm going to do. You can use a dark brown. And just put a little bit of that darker colour underneath the dolphin. Just a little bit in for that other fin there. And that becomes, again, that light and shade. And again, just to play around, I also like to just put a couple of other maybe colours into the uh, skin of the dolphin just to create some of that reflection that uh, creatures have under the water. I just put another light blue in there. Oops, I forgot to put the uh, darker purple here around behind the fin, behind here, and behind the tail there. Now, to conclude, I use the white and the black to just finish putting those final little bits of detail in that we have lost. And this is where I don't put a lot in, but I'm going to put a little bit of that, again, just behind the fins just to give them some definition. I might even just go right underneath the dolphin here just again to define the underbelly a little bit more. And I'm going to put the mouth back in. And the eye. And then with the white, again as part of the highlight, we'll go for another white. I'll just grab a little bit here. Just to define that top, I'll put a little bit in the eye, a little bit on the nose, on the front of the fin, down the back. And I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, the white also, just to create a little bit of more movement in the water. Just put some, some swooshes in, and there we have the dolphin. Don't forget to sign your painting. But as you might like to just put a little bit more colour in or go back over some areas that you, uh, I didn't give you enough time to, to work on, I just want to say a couple of things about dolphins. Again, they are an amazing creature, not just to look at in the wild. But there are a whole lot of stories that, uh, that sort of come down through history and uh, even around us today called Dolphin Encounters. They are stories that uh, really inspire me because dolphins do things that are kind of mysterious and amazing. A couple of these stories involve uh, people 
who are being attacked by sharks and suddenly find themselves surrounded by a pot of dolphins who are protecting them and also attacking the shark with their snouts to keep the shark away. Other stories are of dolphins coming under people who are drowning and lifting them up on their backs to keep them afloat until they are rescued. Other dolphin stories uh, involve uh, going to the rescue of a young girl who was uh, separated from her family as the boat overturned in a storm and surrounding her and then nudging her gently towards the shore. There are two famous dolphins in New Zealand. One is called Opo. He was uh, a very young dolphin who came and rescued a fisherman who had been washed off his trawler in a storm and lifted him up on its back. The other is called Polaris Jack, who used to guide ships through a very narrow, dangerous passageway into the safety of Polaris. That was a fishing village. The stories go on and on. And there's always a mount, uh, there's a whole lot of theories to why dolphins might do this. Um, but in the end, we still conclude that it's a mystery. We don't fully understand. But I look at it a little bit differently. I see it as a way of thinking about those special people in our lives who are like those dolphins in their actions towards us. In those moments when I found myself in turbulent waters, when I've really felt alone, when I've really been struggling, felt that I've kind of lost my way, or just feeling like no one's really there understanding me. There have been certain people who have reached out to me and who have made a connection. Uh, and usually it's not people in my own uh, group that I hang out with or people that I know well. They're, they just seem to come at the right time, at the right place. And they offer different kinds of help, whether it's just a listening ear, whether it's words of wisdom, whether it's some um, practical advice or just helping in, in a practical way. As you draw your dolphin, it might be good just to think about some of those people in your lives and to, maybe if you can, to take time to say thank you to them. But also, flipping it around in this difficult time that we find ourselves all in, why not think of someone that you can reach out to, that you can help in a small way? It could be just, again, um, a word, a listening ear, it could be writing a little note. There's many different ways that we can do it, just to let others know that they are, uh, that we're there for them and that we can uh, kind of touch their lives in a positive way. Thank you very much and have a colourful day.